Hello everybody and welcome back to another My Porch Prints Tutorials. This is Kira and today I'm going to be showing you how to put together this little paperclip pocket that we made. Um, you might have seen a similar example in our uh, Just Journal, January Journal prompts, um, pictures that we had on Instagram. So I'm going to be making one today that is slightly different using the Apothecary Journal Kit for this one. And I have this little CD sleeve here, but I'm not gonna end up using it. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit later, but um, you will need some sort of like a clear plastic for this project as well as like a large card. So this card is from, again, the Apothecary Journal Kit, but you could use anything you'd like. And we printed it on cardstock as well as um, some decorative paper and a paper clip. So that's what we're gonna be using to get started here. So to begin, I'm just going to secure the paper clip onto the back of my card like this, just kind of generally in the center. And then we are going to be covering it with a decorative paper. And for this one, I went ahead and just glued the card down on top of it. My camera died right at that moment, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel it back and just show you a little bit of what I did here. We're just going to be gluing it like directly over the paper clip like this and then smoothing everything out and cutting off any extra. And make sure to save any scraps you have because we'll be using them a little bit later. And then we are going to fold the card in half and when we open it, you should be able to see the paper clip on the back but not on the inside, just like this. So now we've got kind of like a nice secure little hidden paper clip there. And then I am going to be cutting off about an inch from the cover page from the card, just like this. Again, I didn't do any precise measuring here, so about an inch, inch and a half. Just trying to make it a little bit shorter than the back page. And then I'm going to be rounding off those corners to give it a slightly more finished look, along with going over the edges with some uh, vintage photo distress ink. just going over all of those edges. Again, this is an optional step. And then I'm gonna be taking a 1.5 inch uh, hole punch and just cutting out a hole roughly in the center of that cover page, just like that. And again, going in with a little bit of Distress Ink here. All right, and then I went and found a card, a smaller card from that exact same kit. And I'm gonna be using this as my like decorative little piece that's going to slide into the pocket. You could use a faded photo or any other tag or card that you'd like. And then I'm also gonna be taking one of the tabs from that kit, one of the page tabs. And I decided to go ahead and glue mine inside of the card to kind of hide this little edge here, just like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now, just gluing the card shut around that page tab and going over everything with Distress Ink. All right, and the tab should kind of show right where we punched that hole earlier. And then I'm going to be taking one of the journal words from the kit. Again, this is just sort of optional decorating here. And I'm going to tear the ends off and then also like wrinkle it by like just crushing the little piece of paper. And then I'm going to go over it with a bit of distress ink to kind of make it look a little more vintage here. And then I will just glue that down onto my little tab. So it should look something like this when done. There we go, just glue that on there like that. All right, and going over everything again with that Distress Ink just to make sure that everything looks nice and cohesive. And for this part, this is just something I wanted to show you as an option. You could just glue like a page down here to make a pocket and that way you could leave this entire thing open so you would have like some writing space or decorative space on the inside but I'm gonna keep things simple today and just glue the card shut as is. So that's just an option for you if you want to, but 
Um, for now, we are going to be cutting out a little window so we can see the card. Now, I just grabbed something nearby that was kind of the right shape and size. I thought, oh, this is perfect from the card. I didn't realize that it was actually a little too tall for my CD case plastic, so I'm going to have to find an alternative source of plastic to use, but just something to keep in mind. If you, all you have is a CD case, make sure that your little window is not too big for the plastic to cover. But once you find something that is the right size, we're just going to go ahead and lay it on the front cover of the card and then trace around it with a pencil. And then I'm gonna take an X-Acto knife and cut it out. Now, there is something I want to mention real fast that I didn't notice until I was, it was a little too late, which is that if you wanted to, you could just cut the top, bottom, and the right-hand side, and that would create like a little door, like a window here that swings open and shut. So it kind of doesn't disturb the original image on the card, which I kind of thought was kind of cute. So if I had thought about that, I might have done that. Um, unfortunately, I already began to cut this left hand side, so it's got like a hole here. So I'm not going to be able to do that. I'll just have to pop the whole thing out. Um, but if you wanted to, you could try something like that to make like a little door that sort of swings freely open and closed. Alright, so going ahead and finding some plastic that will fit this little window. Um, you can use plastic that comes from like old packaging like this one, or if you have like a binder with like these little like photo protector sheets, um, you can pull one of those out and use that as well, which is what I am going to be doing. So going ahead and popping out that little piece that I cut earlier, um, I'm going to use that to help me measure my plastic. So. You want your plastic to be just slightly larger than the hole that you cut out, so that's why this is a good guide. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're covering it up anyway, but if you don't want to waste too much, you'll want to use like maybe like an inch, inch and a half of plastic around the border of that piece that we cut out. So going ahead and using some scissors and just cutting that little plastic there. And then I'm going to add some glue around the window on the inside of the card here and then use a finger to smooth it out so it doesn't accidentally like glop onto the plastic and make it look messy. So just smoothing that out and then we are going to carefully lay our plastic on top of that and smooth it trying not to get too many fingerprints on it or anything like that. And this is what it should look like when done. All right, so now you should have like a little window through which you can see your uh, card that slides in and out of the pocket, just like that. And here is where you would glue on that other piece. Like if you wanted to print it front and back, you could just glue something here to make your pocket that the card can slide into. And that way you don't have to glue this entire little card shut if you wanted to leave it open for writing space. But I'm gonna go ahead and just glue mine shut for ease and speed today. So just adding glue to the top and bottom, not the side of the card, and just gluing it shut like this. And then the little card should be able to just sort of easily slide in here into that little window portion. All right, now that we have the main base done, we can go ahead and start working on our little decorative uh, paperclip embellies now. So I'm gonna use three mini paperclips and three regular sized paperclips, as well as some scrap pieces of paper that are about an inch to two inches wide, just wide enough to kind of cover most of the paperclip while leaving a little, little room at the top and bottom here. And we're gonna just slide the paperclip onto it like this and then wrap the paper around it. And this is a very important step um, because it will keep the paper from sliding off of your paper clip. So if you don't put the paper clip like onto the paper first, the paper will just slide right off. So that's a very important step. And then we're just going to wrap the paper around the paper clip a couple of times like this. And then I'm just gonna kind of tear it off the extra that I don't need. And there's a pretty good chance you're gonna get some glue on your fingers doing this, so just embrace the mess. <laughs> All right, so going over that with a little bit of Distress Ink along the edges, just to give it a slightly more vintage feel here. And we are gonna do that exact same process for the other uh, two paper clips that we have. So just go ahead and add the paper clip onto the scrap, wrap it around, Glue the extra edge down like this, 
and then going over it with some Distress Ink. All right, and now that we have those finished, they should look something like this. And we are going to decorate these a little bit more. So I've grabbed some items here. I grabbed some washi tape, some little bows, some buttons, and some lace ribbon. So that's what I'll be using for now. And grabbing a little bit of that washi tape, I'm just gonna tear a small piece off and just wrap it around the center of my paper clips like this. Nothing too fancy. And doing that same process with the other two here. Just like that. And then taking that ribbon, I am going to be cutting some of these little tiny ruffles that it has off. Um, you might not have this exact same ribbon. If I can find it, I will try to link it down below, but any kind of like small lacy ribbon should work for this. And I'm just going to cut off three little ruffles from it and glue them down to the top of the paper clip like this. And then using some scissors, I will cut off any extra Give it a nice clean edge here and this is what it should look like when done again just doing that to the other two and then i'm also going to use that same ribbon i decided to go ahead and just glue it along the edge of my card to give it a little bit more uh, cohesiveness and when it's done it should look something like that all right now Setting that aside and zooming in here, um, we are going to be using some jump rings to attach the mini paper clips to the larger paper clips. So I'm also going to grab some needle nose pliers to help me out with that. And I'm also going to use some bulb pins to, to attach some charms and bows to the bottom of the paper clip. Which if you don't have jump rings, you can just use bulb pins. And if you don't have bulb pins, you can just use jump rings. Again, we will have links to everything down in the description box below if you are interested. So grabbing the jump ring, I'm just going to slide it onto the mini paper clip. And then using the needle nose pliers, we're going to open that ring and use it to secure it to the top of our paper clip, like the larger one, like this. And then I'm just going to close the little ring here. Just like that. And these rings are pretty easy to manipulate, so you shouldn't have too much trouble. And then this is what the top portion of the paper clip should look like. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other two paper clips as well. Same exact process. All right, and then here's where I decided to glue on my buttons, just adding glue to the center of each of the paper clips and gluing them on. I would actually recommend waiting to do this part. Um, I'm kind of an impatient crafter, so uh, the buttons were kind of sliding around while I was doing the rest of this, so maybe wait until the end to let them dry properly. <laughs> And then I'm going to be taking a bulb pin and just adding my little charm onto it. And then I'm going to be sort of piercing the center of the bow, sort of like threading it through here. And this actually was like, like perfectly tight. So the bow wasn't sliding around too much. It worked really well. And I kind of just adjusted the bow down towards the very top of the bulb part of the bulb pin. And then just added the large paper clip on top of all of that like this closed it and that is what the charm ended up looking like and you can see there goes my button <laughs> move that back in place there whoops and all right that is going to finish our charm so I'm going to do the exact same thing I'm going to show you one more time um, how I add the bulb pin charm so just threading it through the top of my charm and then through the center of the bow like this and I will have links for these bows down in the description box below. I don't think I'll have the charms because we got these a long time ago. I have no idea where they're from. They might be Tim Holtz, not sure, um, but I will definitely have the bows down below if you're interested in those. And then just clipping the bulb pin onto the bottom of our paper clip. So now that we have finished all of those, the way that you secure them onto our larger piece is really simple. You just take the little paper clip and paper clip it onto the bottom. Just like that, it's real quick, real easy. 
and I think the effect turns out really nice and pretty cute. And because these are removable, you could use them on other projects in the future, things like that. Just kind of a cute, fun decoration here. So now that everything is done, I'm going to kind of do a quick little walkthrough and show you how to secure it into a book. So. Here we are with our little hidden uh, card under this window here. It's not really hidden, it's just a little pull-out card. And then we've got our little charms at the bottom. It's cute little bows and they're nice and removable just like that. And then for securing it into a book, I'm just going to grab the sample book that we have here, make a little room for it. And all you have to do is take the large paper clip that we added at the beginning and just paper clip it onto a blank page like this. And now you've got this cute little card that is easily removable from your journal and it just sort of stays on the page and hangs on like this. All right, so that is going to conclude today's tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had fun and got some inspiration and we will see you in the next video. Bye.